Hey guys, welcome to your second Godot tutorial. So the two most fundamental concepts in Godot are nodes and scenes. In this tutorial, we're going to cover nodes. In the next one, we're going to go over scenes. So you can think of a Godot game as basically a bunch of scenes and each scene. So a scene has a bunch of nodes and other scenes inside of it. It's kind of a recursive definition. Now, Godot ships with a bunch of these nodes that you can use uh, for various functionality. For example, there's a node uh, called Sprite that you can use to draw images on the screen. Uh, there is a node uh, that will allow you to do uh, ray, tr uh, ray intersections. Uh, there are nodes that allow you to define physics objects and things like that. So there are little objects with various functionality that you can put inside a scene and then you can put that scene inside other scenes to create more complex objects. And you can extend the functionality of these nodes by attaching scripts to them. The key thing to note here is that scenes and nodes are arranged in a hierarchy. So you, uh, a node can have a parent node basically. So you have parents and children. Three things to remember about this relationship. When a parent moves or rotates, so does the child. When a parent is removed from a scene, so is the child. When a parent is freed, in other words, deleted, so is the child. Remember these, and I will keep reminding you throughout this tutorial series. So a little bit more about nodes. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Godot ships with a lot of nodes uh, each with a little bit of a different functionality that you can reuse. Uh, you can extend or control a node by attaching a script to it. That's what we're going to do in this tutorial. You arrange these nodes in a hierarchy. So more specifically, you actually arrange nodes and scenes in a hierarchy. Uh, you use the get node function. This is its signature. It's a template function uh, to get another node in the hierarchy. The path syntax is similar to how you specify paths in a command prompt using, for example, the dot dot uh, means, you know, the parent node, dot means the current node, and then uh, as you do slash, it means go to the next one. I'll, I'll show you exa an example of that as well. In a special case, there is a get parent uh, function that gives you your parent node. You could also use this get node and just pass uh, dot dot to get the parent. The nodes, as you've seen, have a position property that determines the position of the node relative to the parent. And they have these two functions. Ready is executed as soon as the node is added to a scene and process is executed every frame. So let's really quickly talk about this process. Now, many of you probably already know this, but a game basically has a, a main loop that executes a certain number of times every second, typically around 60 or so. But it varies based on how fast your computer is, right? You do a little bit of logic and then you draw. You do a little bit of logic and then you draw. And by logic, what I mean here is you create some things, you delete some things, you move some things. Essentially, that's what it boils down to. And that's called your main loop. How many times per second that happens is called your frame rate. So the process method is called every frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new project so I can demonstrate some of the things here. Create a new folder. I'm gonna call it tutorial two. Put it right over here. Launch Godot. Okay, click on new project. Choose the path of that new folder that you just created. Give a name. Leave uh, choose OpenGL three. That is the newer renderer. And you start with this empty scene. Okay. Now go ahead and add a uh, node to this. So click this little button. And these are all the nodes that Godot ships with at this time. So as you can see, there are plenty and. If you click them, you can get a little description of what each one of them do. So animation player, animation tree. These are things that help you with animations. Um, you have a timer for counting down 
uh, tween for doing animations as well. Even an HTTP request for uh, making an online game or something like that. So you have all of these. What we want to do is create a sprite. So we're going to search for the sprite node. We're going to select it, just double click it, and it places one in our scene. So again, this is showing you the scene hierarchy. Right now we're in a scene, an unsaved scene. We'll save that later. And this is a visual representation of what's in our scene. This is a hierarchical representation of what's in our scene. We just have a node called Sprite. One other thing I did want to mention is what you're seeing here, that's the name of the node, not the type of the node. In this case, the name of the node happens to be the same as the type of the node. But I can rename this. So right click, rename, and I'm just going to call this Abdullah. A sprite node simply displays a graphic. So let's go ahead actually first before we add a, a script, let's uh, define what image this sprite should draw. So we'll take this icon.png that is already in our project, drag it to the texture property of this uh, node, drop it, and you set that texture property just by drag and drop, kind of nice. You can of course do it via code as well, and we'll do that in, the, in a future tutorial. So make sure that it is selected. You can either select it by clicking on it in the place where your scene is visualized, or you can select it by selecting the node in your scene hierarchy. So I'm gonna do it here, right click, and then add child node. So I'm gonna make a child node, <laughs> obviously. Um, same little pop-up comes up and choose a type for your child node. I'm gonna choose a, a sprite node again, so just double click that, and there we go. See, it names it Sprite by default. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, let it be called Sprite. Why not? And for the child, I'm also gonna choose an image. I'll choose that icon.png as well, drag it to the texture field, and there it is. Now I'm gonna drag the child and put it right over here, and I'm gonna resize them by using these little things. Now remember those three rules. When a parent moves, so should the child. So if we drag the parent, as you see, the child is also being dragged. That's because the position of the child, which right now, if you click, if you select him and look at his uh, transform and look at his uh, position property, the X and Y values, this 77 in the X direction, 78 in the Y direction, means 77 from the parent in the X, 77 from the parent in the Y. So this uh, sprite, this, uh, this node is always positioned relative to its parent. That's a rule. That's why when the parent moves, so does the child. Furthermore, remember I said when the parent rotates. So you can hold control and then just drag and you can rotate. So when the parent rotates, you see how the child does as well. Again, that's because the child is positioned relative to the space of the parent. So right now, the space of the parent goes like this. Positive X is to the right, positive Y is down, and the origin is up here for this node, right? Its child is positioned relative to its space. So its child has the positions 77, well, uh, oh, I should select the child. The child has the position 77, 77 roughly in the X and in the Y. So that means start here, go 77 in the X direction, go 77 in the Y direction, and that's where the child will be drawn. Now, if we rotate the parent, let's rotate him a little bit like that. Where is the parent space? The origin is still here. The X is still going that way and the Y is still going this way. So let's position the child now. 77 along the X direction of the parent, 77 along the Y direction of the parent. So that is why, because the child is positioned relative to the parent's space. We call that the space, the origin, the X direction, and the Y direction, that's called space. The child is positioned relative to the parent's space. So when the parent moves or rotates, so does the child. Furthermore, remember that when the parent gets removed from a scene, so let's just let's delete it. 
See, so does the child. Just press Control Z to undo that. And then there's also a way to free uh, nodes. When you're done using them, you call their free method. And if a parent is freed, so is it's all of its uh, children. So those are the three rules you should remember about parent-child relationships uh, between nodes and scenes in Godot. So now that we've added a child node, let's go ahead and attach a script. Um, I actually <laughs> meant to do this before, but it's okay, this order is fine. So we're going to attach a script to this node, the Abdullah node, so that we can control it. So right click and then attach script, or alternatively, you can select it and click this little button here. They do the same thing. So I'll just do it this way, I guess. All right, make sure you choose C sharp for your language. We're going to be using C sharp. And then the path where you want to place the C sharp file. Um, remember now, I will repeat this, a couple, uh, repeat this a couple more times. Res basically means the root of your project. Remember we created a project folder, a folder to house our project. Res means the root. So in the root of our folder, we're going to place a file, a C sharp file uh, named abdullah.cs because the .cs extension, it means it's a C sharp file. So we're going to create it. And here, here it is. Again, I like to use Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to launch that. And to open up your uh, Godot project, simply drag that folder into VS Code. I'm going to maximize it, and we're going to edit that Abdullah.C Sharp. So, last time I didn't explain much because I wanted to get you up and running fast, but this time let's slow down a little bit and explain. Uh, uncomment this, delete this, it's just some junk. We're gonna format just to make it look a little better. There we go. Okay. So when we click attach script, we know that this file was generated, abdullah.cs, and it created a class with the same name, right, as the file, and that inherits from Sprite. So notice a, a pattern here, what's going on. The, when you attach a script to a node of a particular type. Here our node is of type sprite because remember when I clicked add node I chose the sprite node and then I named it Abdullah. So when you attach a script uh, the type of the class of your script <laughs> this is getting a bit wordy but I like being exact in, in certain cases. The type of the class of your script right is going to be the same, or not the same, it's going to inherit from uh, the type of the node. Okay, another uh, two explanations. This function over here, the ready function, that's called as soon as your node enters the scene. So as soon as this Abdullah node enters this scene, right, when I launch the game, that's one of the first things that will happen. As soon as it enters, that function will be called. You will usually use that function to do some initialization and stuff like that. The process function is called every frame, and I explained this a little bit when we were doing this slide. And additionally, it passes this little uh, value called delta to you, which tells you the time since the last frame. And you can use this information to uh, move things accurately, like for example, if you wanted to move your, your object at 100 pixels per second, right, then how many pixels should you move him each frame? Well, that depends on the time that passes between each frame. Okay, so here I'm going to probably skip this part for you, but I just want to move the uh, sprite uh, with uh, using the input class. So when, uh, when the WASD keys are pressed, I want to move him a little bit. And we did this in the last tutorial, so I'm going to kind of skip past it. Okay, so I've just written some code that in response to certain keys being pressed, moves my node in a certain direction. So if the W key is pressed, I move him up. If the S key is pressed, I move him down, and so on. Let's go ahead and test that real quick. So we will click this Play Scene button. It's going to ask us to save the scene. Click Yes. Choose a place that you want to uh, put the scene. 
Remember, the res means the root of your project. So in, our root, uh, in the root of our project folder, I want to place the scene, choose a name for your scene. So scenes are saved in a scene file, which has the extension tscn. I'm, since you know, I'm calling this scene Abdullah, I'm going to leave it with that name. So click Save. Okay, so there we go. Now let's move him. And as you can see, just like in the editor, as the uh, parent moves, so does the child. Okay, so one last really quick thing that I wanted to show you guys is how to use that get node function. So uh, now this is going to seem very like weird what, what I'm doing here, but I'm just showing you how to use the function. So don't try to think too much into what I'm trying to achieve. I just want to get the child. Okay, so we have this node hierarchy. Our script is attached to the Abdullah node. And from that script, I want to get the child node, which is called Sprite. How do I do that? I go to my script and let's say I want to get it right here. So I will do this dot get node. Every node has a, has this get node method. In the template argument, put the type uh, of the child, right? So the type of the child in this case is a sprite type. And then in the actual argument, put the name and the name of it is sprite. For demonstration purpose, let's change that name. So we're going to call this child, uh, we'll call it, I don't know, um, just child. I'm not feeling too creative right now, so that, that'll do. Um, all right, so get child, and let's initialize the variable here. It'll be sprite. For a lack of creativity, call that child too. Okay, so we get the child, and then if the W key is pressed, you know what? We'll do child dot global position equals zero zero. So okay. So the position attribute, remember, normally specifies the location relative to the parent, but you can also set and view this global position attribute, which will this tells you the position relative to the whole world, basically. You'll, you'll see this when I run the game. So when the W key is pressed, I'm going to move the parent, I'm going to get the child, right? And I'm going to set the child's global position to 0, 0. So the child will move to the top left. All right, let's do that. And let's go ahead and run. Okay, so you see? He's moving relative to me normally and then as soon as I press W his global position gets set to zero zero So the main purpose of that was just to show you how to use this uh, get node function to uh, traverse the node hierarchy So in summary in Godot uh, you build your game by creating a bunch of scenes and a scene just contains a bunch of nodes and other scenes We'll see that in the next tutorial to launch the game, you play one of your scenes. Nodes can be arranged in a hierarchy, and there's three rules that you have to remember. When a parent node moves or rotates, so does all of its children. When a parent node gets removed or added to a scene, so do all of its children. And when a parent node gets freed, in other words, deleted, so do all of its children. To extend a node or control it, you attach a script to that node. Remember that in your script file, there exists a class, right? And that class must inherit from the type of that node. So I think that's it for this tutorial. It was a little bit long winded, but uh, nodes and scenes are the foundation of Godot. So it is worth taking a little bit more time to going, uh, going through all the rules that guide how nodes and scenes interact and behave. That's it for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll go ahead and cover scenes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.